This is grown man rap. If you grown, stand up, man. Both hands clap. It's like that. This is my name is Moonshine. Uh, better known as Rob Baker. Yo! Sometimes I, I think about having a rap name and then I kind of think it's kind of ridiculous to, to even have one anymore. Like, it seems like a pretty old school kind of approach to doing it. And, I mean, a lot of rap shit is corny, so having a rap name in itself is kind of corny. One. I'm not changing my name, I'm still Moonshine as far as music is concerned. As far but as the Dutch are concerned. As far as the Dutch are concerned, I'm Robert Nicholas Baker. And I'm just a man, you know? I'm just a man I'm trying to make it in this crazy world. Yep. So we got a new angle now, a new perspective on things. <clears throat> yeah. Word. Yo! Well, when I left Saskatoon, it was a long time ago. It was like 2003 that I left. So at the time, the scene had already sort of. It, it was going, like there were shows, there were artists, but I don't think it compares to probably what it's like now. Peace, love, all of the above. <laughs> Imagine that. Pete Rock, Pete Rock, Moonshine, Moonshine, Reform, yo. To speak on the scene here, when I first got here, like it was like Gas Face Capital. It's like you come in and, and I'd already accomplished some things. Like I'd released projects overseas and I'd worked with like artists like Pete Rock and DJ Spinna and stuff like that and that doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't really hate on contemporary rap culture. I think it's fine, man. I think like, I think there's a lot of shit that comes out and I think there's a lot of good stuff that comes out. So, I mean, there's always going to be these gimmicks that pop up and there's going to be these guys that blow up overnight and... There's gonna be the guys like me who are just fucking doing work every day. I feel more excited about being a part of like this new movement of Canadian artists in defining whatever it is we're trying to define. I think that is gonna help all of us more than trying to chase down Talib Kweli to get a verse on a song and pay him $3,000. Like, like whatever, the, the cream still rises to the top. If something's good, people are gonna get behind it, so. I don't see that really as a drawback. What? What? <laughs> That's what, nigga. Moonshine. Toronto. Wax for fall. What? I'm Sean Price, y'all. Grocery list. Um, I used to. I used to think like working with like known artists was sick and exciting and. To be honest, I think like the new artists and the people I'm working with now are better than the old artists. And that maybe sounds kind of fucking bold, but the, the old guys, the old guys, the older guys are like, they're not making stuff that inspires and excites me anymore. So to me, yeah, I have a list, but it's like, my list is pretty much comprised of artists that I am working with. I still feel like like the, the the stuff I'm doing now is probably helping my career more than working with Sean Price or doing a song with any of those guys. Like as much as I love their shit. Decisive and I and Herbnet, all of us got sued for um, liberal use of. Lamont Dozier's song "Peddling Music on the Side." Fight it! I think that I think that we sort of got nailed for it because we won the so the SoCan Echo Songwriting Award for that song, and that was sort of in conjunction with Universal, and Universal owns Lamont's publishing. Fight it! We we got through it, and everything's fine now. And the sick thing actually about it, and I guess the silver lining, is that Lamont Dozier is actually releasing a, a new record and he's using the song on his record. Like, obviously he owns the song now, so we're not gonna see anything for it, but I don't even know if we'll be credited. But 
it's pretty fucking sick that this like Motown legend is like using a beat that I made on his album but it sucked like and the lesson I learned is that it's it's just worth it to to try and clear your shit like we have cleared samples we cleared a sample uh, a Tom Waits sample and I guess Tom Waits owns all his own publishing so maybe that simplified the process but it's just a matter of reaching out to these people like Tom Waits was down a lot of beats that I do they are chopped up and they are manipulated and you probably couldn't tell unless you have a pretty good knowledge of, of samples and records and whatever um, but if something still sounds great I'm still gonna take a loop of it I don't care like but now I'm, I'm more cautious of, of keeping track of what I sample so if I do end up selling the beat or I do end up using it on a project I have the information I need to then go through the process of at least investigating clearing the sample um, yeah I mean shout outs to Uggs Mag and John and Noise who I haven't talked to for probably 10 years or so hope he's doing well hope his, his marriage is going well um, all, all the artists I'm working with who I've been talking about shout outs to them uh, shout outs to my nephew it was his one year birthday just a little while ago going out to visit him at the end of the month in Winnipeg looking forward to that I'm big on the web right now the internet's this new thing it's like really exciting yeah, watch for it, man. Mark my words, the internet's popping.